Are you ready? Ready. All right, let's go. Kevin here, top one financial advisor. And best-selling author. We are here to talk about the stock market. Hey, we have to talk about this week and what we expect to happen this week. So there are three main things that the market is going to pay attention to and is already paying attention to and will likely react to maybe in a positive way, maybe in a negative way, really depends. So I wanna give you some tips on what you may want to consider doing, but also what's what's expected, what's gonna go on this week and kind of give you some, some coaching in advance because here's the thing. A lot of new investors or just investors period are going to you know, buy some stocks this week. They may try something new this week and then the market tanks and they think, oh my God, what is going on? The market is crashing. When in reality, it could be, hey, a company was announcing its earnings today and you didn't know that, right? It, it happens. So I wanna kind of help you with that. But also on the opposite end, maybe you come out here doing something and the market absolutely takes off. Like, oh my, oh, oh I'm, I'm a genius. And then you realize that, oh no, it was because of earnings. It was really good. Or maybe somebody said something in the market and things just happen to be good on that day. So let's talk about what is expected to happen the rest of this week. First, we have earnings. Earnings season is getting started yet again. It happens four times a year. It is when companies come out and tell us, hey, here's how we did from January to March of 2022. It is the first time that companies are gonna to start to come out about what happened this year. Remember, when they came out in January and February, it was for what happened in 2021. We're in the new year. We need to know how companies are performing and what to expect for the rest of the year. And this is a glimpse into that. Some of the big names that are announcing this week as well as names that I am paying attention to. We have Netflix tomorrow, um, also on Tuesday. Well, actually, that's, that's the one I'm really focusing on, on Tuesday. That's, that's really all I'm paying attention to. And the reason why I say that is because the last time that Netflix announced their earnings for 2021 in January of 2022, uh, remember it, it dropped 20%. Uh, I think that was a bit of an overreaction, I don't think. Really, I don't think any stock, but especially a Netflix to drop that far that quickly because of one bad earnings report, which I really didn't think was that bad. Now, that's not a guarantee that's going to happen tomorrow, but if I already own Netflix or I'm considering buying Netflix, I'm going to approach Tuesday very carefully, right? I, I'm just going to approach it carefully. I'm not telling you to buy or sell or what, what have you. I'm just saying earnings is tomorrow, and the last time it happened, the market acted a fool. So... If I'm looking at it, I'm not touching it. Okay, it's just me, but that does happen tomorrow, but it's not the only company. Wednesday, we have Tesla, uh, we have Procter & Gamble, that is ticker symbol PG, and we also have Anthem Healthcare, which is a company I've really, really liked in terms of a defensive stock, especially for this year. They all announced on Wednesday. Then on Friday, we have American Express. American Express is one of my favorite financial companies for this year. I, I'm gonna be watching come Friday. I'm very, very interested in how they will do and how things have played out for them. The interesting thing there is, I feel like American Express has done far and away better than a Visa and a MasterCard. I wanna know why. What is setting American Express apart, especially for this year? And again, all of these companies are very, are, are subject to wild swings, either positive or negative, based on what they say about themselves for the first quarter and what they say they think is going to happen for the rest of the year. We'll see, right? But that's the first thing. The market is going to be looking at these companies, uh, specifically Tesla and Netflix, probably more than anything else, because they're they're going to use this as a as a sign or maybe even a measuring stick for how things may go for other companies. An example here for Netflix is we know Netflix is like the primary streaming name, but they're not the only name on the block. They're going to be looking at Netflix and say, look, did you get subscribers? You raised prices. How did it go? And then use that information to judge Netflix fairly or not. And then take it and go judge Disney fairly or not. Because Disney is trying to get into Disney Plus. They're in a different phase of their business than Netflix is. But right, if it's not going great for Netflix and they're raising prices and, or they may be having some difficulty, they're also going to look at Disney and that stock may be affected, right? As well as any other streaming service. I don't, maybe Roku will be impacted because again, uh, the market, and I don't think it's all necessarily fair, but the market likes to just take everything and just say, look, you look like this company, and if that one didn't do well, then they're all not gonna do well. That's not truth, that is not reality, but that's sometimes how the market reacts. We've also seen, hey, Apple and Microsoft didn't do well today, so the entire stock market is dead, 
right? So uh, just, just be aware of that. I'm telling you now, especially with Tesla and Netflix reporting back to back, they're going to use this. The market is going to use this as well as the media um, and say, like, this is how tech companies are doing. Yes, they are the biggest, but a Tesla is different than Amazon. Amazon is different than a, a Microsoft, right? They're all different, but because they are so large, it's going to help to shape the narrative around how the market is going to do, especially this week. So just be aware of that. If they both do well, we'll probably, we might have a real good week, okay? We'll see. All right, so that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is, which is, I'm not going to say even more important, but it is, it might be. Uh, we've got Jay Powell. He's the chairman of the Federal Reserve. He's going to speak on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. His topic is about the global economy. Um, now, I don't know what he's going to say, but I can tell you this, and it happens every time. Every time the Federal Reserve speaks, every time Jay Powell speaks, the market tends to react. And what they're going to be looking for is inflation is going to be a big part and they're going to be looking for signs and signals about how aggressive they're going to raise interest rates that has been the primary theme outside of russia ukraine that's been the primary theme for the market and the primary reason why a lot of tech companies have not done well so far this year when rates go up usually tech companies especially those that are unprofitable and not really making that much money those are the ones that suffer the most Ask Shopify how things are going. It ain't going all that well. Um, a lot of companies that were high flyers, tech names, were doing great, really last four or five years, aren't doing well because of the threat of rising interest rates and the fact that we've already raised them. So people are really going to be parsing through all of his statements and perhaps overreacting too, but really looking at how aggressively are you going to raise interest rates? How aggressively are you going to, you know, trail back the balance sheet. We did an entire video about the Federal Reserve balance sheet and what that means. Pay attention to it, right? Or at least uh, be aware of it, I'll say that. Now, if you want to talk and, and you want to go and log in to uh, actually go to federalreserve.com or federalreserve.gov and you can tune in and, and live stream it, it will be boring. I guarantee you it will be boring. But if you want to sit there for three hours and watch it, you can. I don't think you have to. Read the notes about it. Uh, but most importantly, be aware of it. So if you are watching the market during the day and come Thursday, I don't know, between one and three, the market starts to do something weird, it's probably because of something he said. So letting you know that now. Okay. And the last thing we need to talk about is China. They announced or not announced, but released their, their data for their GDP, that is gross domestic product. That is the primary way that we gauge how well a, a country is doing economically. It's basically the value of all the stuff that you make. So computers, cars, whatever, you add up all the price tags, that is your GDP as a basic, basic example. But in this case, they announced their GDP. It was one of their best quarters. They had done well. That means they, their economy grew. And that is a generally a good thing. The reason why it's important and the reason why it's good for investors that China grew is because a lot of the companies that me and you invest in use China to produce a lot of the stuff that we need, but also it's a market for a lot of companies that we invest in to sell. For example, Tesla has a factory in China. They also have a factory in Germany. Uh, Disney, they're releasing a lot of great Marvel movies this uh, this year. It's supposed to be great. I ain't seen them yet. Uh, but they're supposed to be putting out a lot of content. Guess where the, the, one of the biggest markets is? It's in China. Uh, Nike, right? When the COVID-19 pandemic first started and they shut down plants in, in China, it hurt Apple and Nike first. Those were the two stocks that I was paying attention to that tanked first because of their operations over there. So the fact that their economy is growing, it seems to be going in the right direction, that could be a good news for U.S. companies. And the other thing, too, is they have had some lockdowns in the last few weeks. That's something to be concerned about. Okay, so if lockdowns are sporadic or if there's a new variant that's hitting that region, it will have a ripple effect really globally, but especially with stocks that have heavy operations in China too. So just be aware of that. But right now, I want to say it was up between 4 and 5% for the first quarter, which again is good. Um, the market hasn't really reacted to it yet because we're really paying attention to earnings and then paying attention to what happens on Thursday. So those are the two days I would be... I guess careful about now if you're not dollar cost averaging until Friday or you're just dollar cost averaging on every Tuesday anyway or whatever day that you choose, there's really not going to matter. What I'm most concerned about and what I would not do is to try and be very active and try and be fancy and try and trade around earnings season and especially when the Fed is making comments. 
those can be very, very difficult times where the market can swing in unpredictable ways. And I'm just not a part of that, okay? I just don't want no parts of it. So for me, since the market will be open this Friday, and it wasn't last Friday, I'm going to sit back regardless of what happens and just invest how I was going to invest anyway come Friday and really tune out the noise, which I think is what most people should do. However, the importance of discussing it and the importance of even doing this video is that you don't overreact to what could happen could happen on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week because that's what some people tend to do. The market does something crazy and then you over, you're over, overconfident in a strategy, overconfident in a stock when it was just Jay Powell saying something, right? You want to be very careful of that because it can go in the opposite direction and you can be overly pessimistic and sell everything just because Jay Powell said something or just because uh, Tesla or, or Netflix or something announced earnings. So just be very careful analyze the information. We'll continue to talk about it this week, depending on how crazy this week gets, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. So again, earnings season, comments from the Fed, and then China data. Those are the three things that you want to pay attention to and watch out for for the week of April 18th. All right, that is it for me. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the comments, and uh, that's it. Talk to you later.